We live. Happy Sunday. Happy Father's Day. Welcome to this Sunday's live stream. How's everybody doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Just filled my gut. Woo! This looks pretty good. Ooh. 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 Dang. Got some definition there. Happy Sunday. We're going to be giving you my first thoughts on the 300L once we get some people in here. So we said, whoa. Whoa is right. Look at it. Just look at it. Alexis with the tongue out. Thank you. Somebody appreciates it. Pro Noster with the whoa. What the hell? I just joined. <laughs> What's up, BC? What up, mudding and more? Thing looks slick. Dude, it is. I'm really happy with it. Pauline, the Booners, what's going on? Thanks for stopping by. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. I know I got some senior citizens in here, so shout out to all you guys out there raising strong families. You know, thank you for not pulling out. Thank you. <laughs> that is a nice bike. What's up, Rick? What's going on? We just got back from a ride, actually. A little Father's Day ride down at Wayne. We rode bike half an hour but it was a good time um alexis and dj brought their dad out and he was riding the 150f and did good had a good time uh the trails were like super muddy so he struggled a bit but for the conditions and probably never doing something like that he did good we got gramatron in here dad of nine shout out to gramatron everybody wish him a happy father's day Luckily, I pulled out the last 30 years. There you go. Thanks for not pulling out. Got me dying over here. I have a $60 trillion dirt bike. Holy crap, dude. Respect. Bro, I feel like my buddy just got a bike. I'm way too hyped for this content, man. That's awesome to hear. And I got some good stuff coming. I did a uh, top five things that I love about the CRF 300L. So... I'll tell you about some of that today, you know, give you a little sneak peek of the video since you're here. Yeah, the bunny killer, man. That's that's what this bike is going to be named because I murdered that bunny. Shout out to Mr. Peter Rabbit. But yes, guys, we picked up the uh, 21 CRF 300L. I really wanted this bike. The 250L really grew the channel and took it to what it is today. So it just kind of made sense to get the next one in the line and I wasn't like super ecstatic about the slight upgrades and I'd really like to ride another stock 250L so I can give you a good comparison because mine's got some things done to it. It's got the EJK ever since I've owned it. It's got different gearing so it'd be nice to ride like a bone stock 250L and put them side by side but the biggest thing I like is the display honestly. That's the thing you notice the most and the newer Groms have it as well and I'm assuming the CBs and all that stuff, but you got a gear indicator, you got fuel consumption, you got a uh, shift indicator, uh, odometer, tack, all that good stuff. I picked a terrible spot to do this. I'm getting eaten alive by mosquitoes right now. We might actually have to move this here in a bit. I'm getting uh, booty raped by the skeeters. But yeah, guys, we picked up the 300L. It is a dual sport, mainly a street bike, you know. I would say it's like a 60-40, but if you knew me and you know the channel, we rode the 250L like it was a dirt bike, and I did the same thing today, and I was more than happy with it. It's a, it's a good bike, man. It's one of those things that uh, you just hop on and go, point it in the direction, and it'll go anywhere. So, dude, I can't do this, man. I'm getting freaking eaten. I'm getting eaten. So, we're going to change the location. I'm going to try to do this one-handed. Do a little freaking moto vlog on the stream for you. Find somewhere where we're not getting clapped. My cheeks are getting clapped by these skeeters. There we go. What's up, little Gromlin? Yes, sir. Once again, happy Father's Day, man. Thank you for just letting it go, letting it loose, busting that back. I get it guys, we're lagging. Give me a second, I'm out in the country. Give me a second. Oh! Almost put her down. 
we, we almost put her down. Alright, how's this, how's this next? How are we doing? We out here in the middle of a damn field. Wind's blowing, hopefully get the skeeters away from me. Damn, things are driving me nuts. Let me hop off here real quick. Oh, check the view out. Thanks. There we go. Now we're talking. Woo, 300L. Let's get back to what I was talking about. Old Grandma Juan said, um, I was actually very impressed today with how it handled on the trails with all the mud. Yeah, I mean, these tires are junk. If you buy one of these things and you want to do some real off-road and get some different tires, man, because these things are like ice skates. What are these things? The IRC um, Trails CP22B. Got the uh, the green and yellow. This is like a 60-40 uh, street dominant tire for sure. Don't let these knobs fool you. They are worthless. We were all over the damn place, but... You just take it easy, man, and just don't give it the beans. Like, I think Boomhauer, if he would have rode this, he probably would have died today because he only's got one speed, and it's go. It's like, there's no in-between. It's on, off. There's no, like, half throttle. So I think he would have been, like, drifting all day. This might as well be a drift bike. Yeah, man, we got that Mississippi mud flap coming in. I ain't from Mississippi, but my mud is flapping. Holy crap. No way. EETV said, dude, why didn't you say something? Saw you today at Monday Creek, was in the white F-350 with the Polaris Sportman, Sportsman's. Nice, dude. That's what's up. Trails were muddy today, you know. Tell them, so I don't sound like a wuss, but the trails were wet. Obviously not as big of a problem on a four-wheeler with four-wheel drive. <sighs> yes, these tires are garbage. These tires are junk, man, but uh, they're good on the street. Good-ish on the street. And it is what it is, man. You buy a cheap bike, you're going to get some cheap tires with it. So we'll probably rock these for a while. And I'll probably do the Dunlop D606 because we've always had the Kenda Trackmasters. I've sold, you know, thousands of sets of uh, Kenda Trackmasters. And um, I'm going to try something different because they haven't really showed me much love. So Kenda, hit your boy up or I'm going to the Dunlop. I'm going to try the old D606 and see what those are about because... I think those will be a little bit better on the street because they're they're a little bit harder compound. The Trackmasters are uh, a little bit softer and they get ate up pretty quick. So, yeah, we'll show you guys the bike. We'll do a little walk around. Favorite part, obviously, the display. We just talked about that. Fuel consumption gauge. We got a tack, fuel indicator, gear indicator, shift light indicator. And this bike has freaking hazards. How silly is that? I've never had a bike with hazards. Look at that. Hazards. It's hazardous. I, I rode with these like all day today. <laughs> Todd, this is the, uh, oh, I see what you're asking. Um, somebody asked 300L or 450L, and that's a fantastic question that I'll have a full video on, like going in depth on why that I feel this way. But um, you obviously know that I own the 450L. Sorry for the wind noise. Let me, let me go here. Um, my 250L does not have uh, hazards, so it must be the newer ones. But, um, my thoughts on the 450L, performance-wise, yes, it's better. Obviously, I mean, it's got more power. It has a way better suspension. Um, overall, it's a more capable capable bike off-road. If you're going to ride it as a dual sport, the 450L, not for me. Um, the 300 all day long. It's just a, a street engine. It's a street engine. It's a lot more forgiving. Even at low speeds, I like it way better. So personally, off-road, I like the 300 engine better just because it just, uh, for me, it has the perfect amount of power. The 450s are just too much in the woods, in my opinion, unless you're going to be like riding wide open in the desert. The 300 really does have enough power. It really does. So say what you want to say. Um, it's the bike for me. But you got to know what you're getting. You know, don't expect a dirt bike because it's not don't expect a high performance dual sport because it's not you know it's a entry level bike for majority um entry level riders but for me it, it fits the bill i want a dual sport i want something that i can go a year without changing the freaking oil 
I want something that um, is more friendly on the street, has a little bit lower compression, uh, less vibration. Honestly, this bike is just way better as a dual sport than the 450L. Um, the 450L is a glorified dirt bike. And, uh, you know, it, it's lighter, yes, but it doesn't feel lighter. The 450L never really felt that light to me because um, it's not. In comparison to a dirt bike, it's still heavy. So the 300L, while it's a little bit heavier, to me it just doesn't feel that way. It wears its weight well. And I, ha I talk about that in the video, but I feel like it just has a good center of gravity. Like this is just a well-balanced bike and I would even consider it nimble. And I don't know why um, so many people like to argue, argue me on that. I'm not biased. Yes, I like Honda. Maybe I'm a little bit biased towards the uh, the Ride Red fam, but uh, I don't receive a dollar from Honda. They've never shown me any love. I've never liked to post. So I have a completely unbiased opinion. I've rode all the bikes out there um, as far as like the dual sports and the WRDRZ, the, the KTMs, the KTM 500s, the 350s, all that stuff, the two strokes and yet I still bought this bike. So it's a purpose-built bike. It is a dual sport. I would say it's, you know, 60-40 majorly for the streets. You know, it's a much better um, street bike than a dirt bike, but you can ride it off-road no problem, and we did. I don't want to say some gnarly stuff today, but um, to some, it is, and I'm happy with it, guys. So let me know your questions about the uh, 300L. What's up, Dano? And uh, yeah, obviously, the KTMs are in a completely different class. You really can't compare those bikes. But at the end of the day, it depends on what you want to do. It depends on how you're going to ride. So a lot of people, I feel like they buy these bikes expecting them to be something that they're not and they get let down. But I know exactly what I was buying and I'm happy with the purchase. So do a review on the Hawk DLX. I'd like to. Got to get my hands on one. Uh, 300L or the DRZ400. 300L all day long. Um, the six speeds for me, the fuel injection, and the weight. Um, I know the weight difference isn't that big, but the DRZ feels like a hog compared to the 300L. It's just my opinion. Um, I've ridden a lot of DRZs, and to me, they just all feel heavy. They don't wear their weight well. They feel top heavy to me, and the 300 just has a better center of gravity. So, in my opinion, um, 300L all day long. DRZ. Does it have better suspension? Yeah, probably, but uh, it's not a deal breaker for me. I'm about 190 pounds, uh, 200 plus with gear, and I still have fun and I still get by with the soft suspension that this bike has. And that's the biggest downfall, in my opinion, of these bikes is the suspension is just way too soft. It's too soft. Um, there's not much adjustability. You can adjust the sag, whoop de doo but as far as like compression, dampening, like no, there's nothing to touch, no clickers or anything like that. I would like to do the fork springs in the different shock on this one. We never did it with the 250, but at some point I would like to do that, and uh, that is the plan. So, uh-oh, uh-oh, we got Tilly two-wheel in here repping the team green, baby. Yeah, my dad was out ripping his minty fresh KDX today. I got to ride it around a little bit, man. Love the old KDX, but uh, ride red, man. Ride red, get head, or stay your ass in bed, because I don't want to hear it. But yes, this bike is nice. Um, it's exactly what I expected. The 300's a nice change. It's definitely got a, a little more pep, not a deal breaker. Like, if you already have the 250L, don't go selling it and buying the 300. It's like not that big a difference unless you're just like the new stickers and uh, that extra two horsepower, you know. And they say that these are a little bit lighter weight. That's a plus. So if you don't have one, um, yeah, go ahead and buy it. But uh, if you have the 250 and you're like contemplating what to do, um, just keep the 250 in my opinion. Unless you really want to, then that's all good. Thanks for filming. Yeah, Nick, of course, man. Thanks for watching. I'm trying to see Tanner with some gold wing content. You already know we're going to get the wing at some point. We're going to get the gold wing. We're going to be doing some off-roading on the gold wing. Are you experiencing the famous 5K rattle? Uh-oh. 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 I don't like the sound of that. So um, you're going to have to go into more detail because I haven't heard of that. 
and no i mean so far i've had this thing up to like 85 miles an hour and uh, no rattle so i don't know what you're talking about enlighten me what is a better deal a used 250l or a new 300 well with the way that the used prices are right now i hate to say it but i don't know it just depends on what you can get man if you can score a 250l for like 35 four grand and yeah go with the 250l because you're not going to get anywhere close to that with the 300 but depending on your area and how new of a bike you want it might be worth it to uh save a little bit extra more and buy the 300. hey i appreciate it todd what's going on everybody uh, sometimes small engines are more fun and better for tight areas agreed back to the 450l thing too much for the trails too much you don't need that much power and that's just my riding style if you like to ride wide open fields and the desert and the dunes and stuff woo! that's windy guys so sorry about the audio i'm trying to cover it with my hand outdoor price you can get them for around six grand which to me is is, is a really good price for what you get you know there's a lot of tech packed into these bikes uh there's a lot of features that you get for your money you know compared to like a 450l where you're gonna be like eleven twelve thousand dollars out the door yeah yeah you get a good deal for the 300. should i buy a honda 420 quad god fellow quad god in the building man yeah i love the 420 i love the 420 just as much if not more than my rubicon so 420 all day long um tilly says the 450l was terrible for the tight trail riding yes it was i i, I hated the bike that's another thing oh my god this clutch is like stupid i don't know if it, it'll show on camera but like look at that look look at that you know how weak a pinky is look at that it's so effortless i love it and that's another thing i mean granted we didn't ride long but i had no fatigue this bike was very comfortable to ride it's super smooth the power is uh the power is great and i have no complaints um of course you know like the bike does well on the channel the 250l helped grow the channel to massive amounts and i really appreciate all the viewers that are still here from that so yeah that played a part into buying the 300l just because i wanted to give you guys and girls the content about it so i'm not going to say like it was the top bike on my list of things to buy uh, realistically i would like to get a bigger bike like a klr 650 or a yamaha t7 a little bit more money for that t7 but i, I really wanted something bigger but at the end of the day, I don't regret my purchase at all. And I've been loving the bike so far. As soon as I cut this live stream off, I'm going to go ride it some more and do some dual sporting. Go out, explore some back roads and finish the video. Go um, do some drone shots. And yeah, guys, so I'm happy with the 300, man. I'm happy. It's a good bike. I would definitely recommend it if you were looking to get a dual sport. And you know, you know what they say. Ride red, man. Honda wings. About seven o'clock here, Mr. Braylon. Yeah, I'll grab my helmet for sure. Gotta have that GoPro hooked up. Do you ride a Can Am? I used to. I had a 650, but ended up selling it and got on the Honda, man. I'm a Honda guy at heart. Reliability, because reliability. ETA and the merch. Very soon. I'm just waiting on Gramatron to print it. Um, he's actually going to be doing the merch for the channel. So shout out to Gramatron. Um, we've been working together and getting all the right equipment and getting everything set up. So it's going to be some really quality stuff, but you guys will have to just spam Gramatron for that. Cause I've got him the logos and I'm just waiting on him to start printing and getting them sent out. So very soon guys, would you say the forks are any better or the same pool noodle forks? These are worse. These forks are worse than my 250L. Uh, granted it's probably just put a little bit less oil in them when they were assembling it unfortunately but yes these are softer for sure i bottomed them out already uh, like i said that's the biggest downfall is the suspension so if you buy one of these and you already know about the suspension issues you might want to set aside some money to upgrade it because that's my only complaint only complaint so far is the suspension but once again i knew what i was getting myself into i knew it's soft i knew it's you know not the best but as a dual sport it's fine you're not going to be sending like 60 foot triples and 
doing motocross racing on these bikes, uh, but they'll do a trail ride just fine. Tried to find the waterfall at Wayne, but got lost once I got back to the trailer and I was out of gas. Damn, sounds like a fun adventure though. Oh no, I'm trying, no lies. Keep up the great content, man. Your videos are always fun to watch. Hey, I appreciate that. Cali Reliable, dude, all the Japanese brands. I'm a Japanese rider, for sure. You can't go wrong with uh, the trio, man. The Yamaha, Suzuki, and uh, the Honda. Suzuki, not so much. They haven't done anything impressive in the, in the past, like, decades. So, sorry, Suzuki, but, yeah. Yamaha, Honda, all day long. Kawasaki, you already know. Change the fork oil to AMS oil 15 or a 20 weight and put one inch spring preload spacers in the forks. Yeah, uh, it just sucks to have to tear into a new bike, but I'll do something along those lines soon, if not a whole fork spring kit, as well as a rear shock. I'd like to do a race tech or Olin's, but man, that's big money stuff. So we'll see. I hate to dump that much money into a bike, but I would like to do it, you know, see if it's worth it. Give you my thoughts on that. If it's worth the extra, you know, thousand plus dollars. Really though, what does Suzuki have going for them? Nothing. They just change graphic kits and keep releasing the same bikes for the past 20 years. It's unfortunate because they have potential, but is what it is. Do you think that my KYB A kit suspension will uh, fit on it? No, not really. I don't think so. Definitely not. Adventure Daily Dragon's Tail event. There we go. That would be sweet, Todd. Uh, we just got back from there, actually. and I did it once, and then my Grom started leaking oil. And that's a whole other story for a future video, but we'll definitely be back plenty of times to do the Dragon. As soon as I uh, get a different wheel set up for this thing, we're going to be making another Tennessee trip and riding the roads down there, Supermoto style. Intense. Terrible wink. Yes, yes. Thumbs up on the Olin's review. We'll see about it, guys. We'll see. I'd love to. So, darn, keep me posted. I'm coming hot. Dude, sweet. We'll get something planned for sure. I'd love to. I don't know about the Dragon. Uh, I don't know. I don't like to have that many people riding at the Dragon at once, but we'll see. We'll get something. Maybe do a Foothills ride. I love the Foothills. Will you get a new seat soon? Honestly, it didn't bother me. I'll definitely get a seat cover, but as far as spending $300 for a seat, my butt's not telling me that I need to. I, I didn't really get that sore today because I've been riding like two by fours on the KTM and I stand up so much in the dirt that it doesn't really bother me. So maybe not for a while. What state are you in again? I'm Ohio, central Ohio, man. Alexis still going to sumo the 250L? Yeah, that is a plan. It looks like we're going to have dual supermotos. Hint, hint. That's a big hint, man. I'm giving you guys the goodies. Uh, oil capacity? Oh, frick, I don't know. You don't need to put oil in it. It's a freaking Honda, dude. It's probably like 1.2 quarts or something like that. Maybe a little bit more if you do the filter. Probably like one and a half. Not much. Not much. I'm sure somebody knows. Do you love the exhaust on the 300? Yes, I do. I'm a quiet exhaust guy, so it doesn't bother me. I have that obnoxious FMF on the 250. And sometimes I don't even want to ride it just because it makes so much noise. You can't... I like to ride and stop. You know, I like to ride somewhere, stop, and um, not not have anybody hear me. So the, the 250 exhaust is just completely annoying and uh, bugs the crap out of me. So I do like the quiet exhaust on the 300. It does not bother me. And uh, yeah, until he says he couldn't hear me. Dude, you can't hear anything over the KDX. I think the KDX sounds like a tornado, like a bunch of uh, elephants in a tornado. It's freaking loud. What price is it new? It's 6,300 euro here in Ireland in July. You can get out the door for like uh, six grand. Are any FMF exhaust quiet? They have the Q4. For some reason, they the quiet core insert was out of stock and I was gonna get one for my power core four on the uh, 250L, but they're out of stock. So as soon as it comes back in stock, I'll go ahead and grab the uh, the quiet core insert and hopefully that'll quiet it down enough for me to to want to keep it but ultimately that's up to lex because that's not mine so does it just sound like those new honda generators can we hear it at rev limiter no no rev limiter i'll leave that for mj but um yes it's uh it's a sewing machine you can't hear it well, i'll fire it up for you i gotta make sure it's in neutral um, i never put my bikes in neutral i'm bad about doing that i just hop on and 
and go. Damn it. Finding Nemo, finding neutral. There we go. Dude. You guys hear that? Thing's a beast. Very powerful machine. Very, very powerful machine. Do you look at the gear indicator at all? Um, no, I don't. It doesn't really... It's a cool feature, but for me, I'm not constantly looking at my dash. I know my bikes, I just ride them. Sounds just as quiet as my CT70. It's probably quieter, honestly. You probably got more valve noise in that CT70 than exhaust. All these comments, people need to be liking this video. Yeah, man, drop a like. Drop a like. Do you know what the difference is between that L and the rally? The fairings. Uh, the fairings is the biggest difference. You might have a 12 volt socket on the rally. You got the windscreen, but apart from plastics, there's really no difference with the rally. So for me, um, I do more off-road riding than on. So it didn't make sense to have all that extra bulk, but you know, to each his own, if you like the look, maybe more of an adventure style, but yeah, out the door around 6K. I already liked this on both of you. Dude, you're the man. Rick Cummins out here supporting but we'll definitely be doing some head-to-heads with the 250L, some direct comparisons. And overall, I don't really know what else there is to say. You got to stay tuned for the videos, guys. We took it off-road in the National Forest today. Did a good little ride. There was some intense stuff. It was muddy. It was wet. So we, we, we weren't light on it. We put it through um, its paces as much as I want to with my leg. I'm still like 70%, guys. I got a lot of work to do. And, of course, this motivates me to keep going and keep pushing through this and getting back to 100% so I can really start riding because it's like it's like uh, getting a case of blue balls man I'm like I'm seeing these hill climbs and all this stuff that I want to do but I know that I shouldn't and I know that I'm going to risk hurting myself and re-injuring myself because I'm not 100% yet so yeah that's what I can, can, can compare it to Alexis was asking me like if I was super excited today to ride the dirt bike for the first time really and I was like uh, yes and no while I'm thankful to still be out there it just sucks not being able to do like what I want to do, but that's life, you know? So I'm still having fun. My 60 inch TV is hooked up to uh, my Ronin account and I comment on my cell. Dude, you're the man. There we go. I like that. Appreciate that. Take it easy. Do some leg exercises for rehab, dude. Believe me, I've been doing the rehab and it's, it's a long process when you uh, go through two surgeries and don't get to make any progress for about a year or so. It's life, man. A little more fuel and suspension travel on the rally, I'm pretty sure. Uh, fuel, yes. It does have a bigger fuel tank. Um, the lights, yeah, but mostly cosmetic stuff. Suspension, I don't think so. Was it hot in Ohio today? Yes. It was like a high of 90, and uh, for me, it wasn't bad, but everybody else was hurting. So we dipped off in Monday Creek and, and washed off, and it felt good, but yeah, it was hot in Ohio. Other thoughts on the 300L. Um, number one, I like the tech, man. I like the new display. New Groms have them as well. Probably other CBRs and CBs, but I'm glad they added the display. Um, comfort. It's a comfortable bike to ride. You don't get a lot of rider fatigue. It's very soft. I would consider it agile. Like I said, it wears its weight well. It, it feels good, and I much prefer this over like a DRZ or something like that. So... I don't think the weight is an issue. I said the same thing about the 250L, so feel free to disagree. Doesn't matter. I still like it anyways. Um, I probably will do an exhaust at some point, but we're gonna ride it stock for a while. Passenger pegs, yes. We actually rode two up a little bit today. I had Lex on the back in a bikini. Yep, you guys don't get to see that one, unfortunately. But we were uh, doing some little two up. And Todd, Make sure you tell Honda I sent you. No, I'm just kidding. It don't matter. But they're good bikes. They're good bikes, and uh, I'm sure you'll love it if you know what you're expecting, right? That's what I say. That's Everybody's like, dude, should I buy the 300L? Just know what you're getting yourself into. It's more of a street bike than a dirt bike. It'll do the dirt bike things, not as well, but it's one of those bikes where it's just solid. It feels solid. It's smooth. The power's good. Plenty of power on the trails. Um, enough on the road. That's what I'll say, enough on the road. 300's a nice upgrade from the 250. Um, it's a no-brainer, it's a direct swap. A lot of people are doing the swaps on the 250 because it is a direct uh, bolt-in replacement. 
Honda was smart enough. They listened. They put the 300 in there. Hats off to them. Another good bike. I'm really excited to ride it, enjoy it, and I'm going to leave it stock for a while. Like I said in my first video, I'm going to ride it stock, see what it can do stock, even with the stock tires. I had them out in some soupy conditions today, and I managed. You know, I don't say it's a good idea, but you can get by if you want to. Yeah, I agree, man. Honda, they put a lot of research and development into things, and they're not going to release a product that's subpar, so... Just know what you're getting into, guys. This is not a dirt bike. This is a fantastic dual sport for the money, around 6K. You can get one of these brand new, fuel injected, six speeds, nice electronics. Um, th there's just a lot uh, of good things about this bike. And in my opinion, for the money, there's more good things than bad. So look forward to future videos and more honest opinions. Um, yeah, I'm just. I've rode the WRs, I've rode the DRZs, I've rode the KLXs, I've rode all the bikes in this class, and this one still appeals to me the most. And uh, yeah, it just does. It's a great base to start with, absolutely. It's a great starter bike for sure, great bang for the buck, and it, it'll get you from point A to point B and put a smile on your face. So that is my, uh, my first initial thoughts on the 300. Stay tuned for the trail riding videos. Got several trail riding videos coming, a lot of dual sporting. We're going to get Lex back out on the 250L and do some couples uh, dual sport rides, go out, explore, camp out, a lot of camp out soon and a lot of good stuff. So hope you are looking forward to the content. I really bought this bike for the content and for you guys and girls to enjoy. And I know I have a lot of 250L um, fans in here and I wanted to get the 300 so I can give you my opinion, whether it's worth upgrading, whether you should buy it. If the changes are that different and the changes are subtle they are good improvements about the frame the 250l had a separate subframe so this is all one piece now it's all welded together which is a good and a bad thing we saved some weight i think this bike is like 10 pounds lighter Woo! just don't eat for a week or so and you'll get 10 pounds lighter but the bad thing is if you like loop this out the bad thing is if you loop this out and you bend this frame you're gonna have to get a whole new frame uh, good luck bending it back you can try but at the end of the day you'll probably have to get a whole new frame if you get into a big accident or something like that versus the detachable subframe you'd just be able to replace the subframe so it's a trade-off a little bit less weight for a bigger headache in the future but I, I don't think that will be very likely to happen that's worst case scenario what else um, the triple trees are black Granted, guys, some of these comparisons that I'm making are from my 2014 250L. So I haven't owned the newer body style yet with the newer um, changes that they did. Not that they did much, but some of the things are different on the like the 18s and the 19s than um, what's on my 14s. So the triple trees are black. I like that touch. I'm going to get these reflectors off there ASAP. Um, the head is black. That was not the case on mine. Other little cosmetic things. Obviously, this frame guard is different. Uh, I kind of like the old version better. Like I liked the separate subframe, like I said. Brake setup is the same. Uh, I like the red shock. I don't believe that my shock was red on the 250L. I could be wrong. Um, Got to get rid of this whale tail soon. Uh, do a integrated tail light, too and the toolbox is different it's definitely bigger i think it was like integrated in the side plastic so this one will look pretty clean when you take it off too if that's your thing but i'm gonna leave it on like i said keep your stock um other than that guys we have two radiators on this model i believe um yes no okay nope tanner sound like an idiot we do not have two radiators. I thought we did because the fan like, sounds like it's on this side, but okay. We have one radiator, once again. And um, what else, guys? What else can I say? Air cleaner, easy to clean. Yeah, it's underneath. Um, whoa, that's my face. It's not underneath there. Air cleaner is just like you got to take the side panel off to get to it. These things are super restricted, so they don't get dirty that often. I will replace it with a and n I'm assuming it's the same design as the 250. I haven't verified that yet, but I'll throw a and n in there that you can actually wash and, and reuse because I like to be able to clean my own filters and not just have to buy them every time. 
Oh, but I've said about all I can say. I got about two hours till the sun goes down, so I want to have some fun on this thing, get some more content for you guys for uh, the next video, get some drone shots, and let's see what Frank. So, if hauling a bunch of luggage, does the subframe make the DRZ a much better option? I've heard of people having issues with the previous gen 250Ls and, and bending and or breaking the subframe. Maybe this fixed that issue. So that's to be determined. I'm not a big uh, dual sport guy, like as far as full luggage setups, but maybe that's something we'll do with this bike. Honestly, I kind of envisioned doing a lot more uh, street riding on this bike. So I'm not sure that that's the case. Like I said, I would like to get a bigger adventure bike. So maybe we'll do like the full bag setup on that or just buy the adventure, uh, the KLR, I think it's the adventure package that already has the bags and stuff on it. Uh, I, I don't know what the future of this bike is. I know I'm going to enjoy it on the streets quite a bit because I've just been having fun street riding while I'm healing up. So any last questions before I call it quits? We have almost a hundred freaking people in here. That's awesome. I appreciate all the support guys. Make sure you have those notifications on on my channel. You can see it just next to the subscribe button. There's a little bell. Click that, hit all, turn the notifications on so you don't miss out on the videos because YouTube sometimes doesn't promote my stuff because YouTube is YouTube. But I'm happy to be here making content and doing it successfully. So I appreciate all the support. Once again, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there, man. Thanks for busting, not holding it in, and uh, giving, uh, giving life to all these great people out there. I enjoy the three-wheeler video and I'm trying to find one like it. Uh, plenty of big red and uh, little red videos coming soon. Hint, hint. I'm terrible at Lincoln. I'll work on that. Thanks, BDJ. I appreciate it. Budzilla, thank you, man. Everyone hit the like button. Yeah, Rick, appreciate it. I'll probably leave this stream up for a while so people can watch it, even though the beginning was clapped out with the connection. But what else, man? What else? Uh, I don't want to miss anybody's comments. Do you think it's possible to reroute the brake line on the 300L? Uh, yeah, do I think it's necessary? No, it didn't really bother me. Um, you probably could do something, but that's how most dirt bikes are. So here's what it is. Get an exhaust. Hey, send them on my way, man. Send a super chat for $300, dude, and then I'll freaking get an exhaust on this thing. Even though they're probably like five. But yeah, hit me with that super chat, 300 bucks, dude. I'll get a Yoshi. But <laughs> if not, um, it's going to be a while before I get an exhaust. Uh, like I said, guys, I'm going to ride it stock for a while and just enjoy the bike as is, as it came from the factory. So... I can really give you an honest opinion. Uh, I'll probably put a thousand miles on it and then do a 1,000 mile review. Maybe my thoughts will change on the bike. Might have some issues. Never know, man. Stuff happens. Shout out to my buddy Josh. I haven't seen him in a long time, but he lost the sight glass out of the side of his uh, case on his 250L. Sight glass popped out on the trails. And that was a whole situation. But like I said, stuff happens, guys. Um, nothing is perfect. Every brand has their issues, but the Hondas have been good to me and I've always felt good about owning them and uh, their products are quality in my opinion, man. Uh, good value per dollar and that's why I have another 300L. So welcome to the channel if you're new. I'm happy to have this bike. I'll give you one last little walk around here, guys. I love the red, white, blue, that HRC colorway. Woo! Honda, man. Pure Honda right there. It is a good looking bike. I do like the new styling. I wish it had the 450L headlight like it did in the rendering when I got all excited. I'd like to do a 450L headlight conversion, but it's expensive to get the housing, man. Like all that stuff. It'd be like 400 bucks. No way. And get the new fender too. Nah, maybe someday, but for now, we're going to enjoy it as is. I'm glad you guys are excited. Off-road video is coming soon, as in like tomorrow soon. So... Like I said, just uh, stick around. Great stuff coming. Keep growing the channel. A lot more outdoor adventure-based stuff and dual sporting and camping. And yeah, I'm really pumped. It's going to be freaking awesome. Non-stop content this summer. Keep things rolling. Uh, same page, but I just changed the name from Attention Deficit to Adventure Daily uh, just for the sake of fitting the channel better and, and branding and marketing. The uh, attention deficit name was just hard. It was confusing to a lot of people. And um, I just think the adventure name fits the channel a lot more. And I've had some good feedback on it so far. So thank you, Todd. I appreciate that. I really do. Gary, thank you. Budzilla, uh, keep it lit, man. Riding videos coming. Um, thank you, Rick. I'm definitely being careful. Uh, man, I just got to keep working it. You know, got to keep doing the rehab and. I really want to, you know, be doing these hill climbs and all that good stuff that I love to do. It definitely has forced me 
to be a lot more cautious while riding, analyze the terrain a lot different, use my throttle a lot different, use my clutch a lot different. And um, it's kind of been cool to, to see that. So I did have fun, uh, you know, I did have fun riding. I'm not saying I didn't have fun, but I can't wait to have more fun. It's all about fun here, guys. So fun and working hard. So I appreciate it, guys. I'm going to head off of here and go for a ride. Diesel is doing good. He actually um, has a little paw issue right now. His, his, his arm's bothering him, his leg is bothering him. So he usually just gets over it pretty quick and is back to normal but these will be on here. Todd says, what made you decide to start a YouTube? Growing up uh, as a kid, I filmed everything, you know, from my first camera phone up to when I got a camera to a camcorder. I was just, I was filming everything and I never did anything with the content. I wish I would have started way younger because we'd be freaking doing numbers right now, but it ain't about the numbers. That's the biggest thing. I just like sharing these experiences, sharing, making memories that I can look back on, you know, later in life and, and you know show people and and relive all these awesome memories that we've we've created so i love film i love video i love photography and uh, i'm just you know turning this into a full-time career and it just feels good to do your own thing and provide um, entertainment for people to enjoy because at the end of the day it's all it is you know it's another form of entertainment overnight moto camping with the pup would be great content coming soon on the three wheelers for sure Aaron, love you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Uh, if I don't leave, I will keep talking. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Tyler. All my OGs. Rick, Slow Ride, Downey, ETV, Gary, Matthew, John. Thank you, everybody. Tilly, Gramatron, thanks for stopping by, as always, man. Appreciate the support. Look forward to the video tomorrow. And until the next one, see you then. We gotta roll. Let's roll, man. Let's go. Start the old girl up. That's the hazard button, not the starter button. There we go. See you guys.